those kinds of things, that's when you make the right product choice, not ahead of time. Because if somebody uh, comes in and says, I got to have a 203K and I'm putting in a pool, you can't do that. Yeah. Right? So we're going to look at the variables and then make the product choice. These are the peripheral attributes of all renovation loans. This math, same way, fits all renovation loans. Okay? And this will give you a good idea that will answer all of the questions that you have. So, simple math. Sales price plus repairs equals the total investment. You need to have a good understanding around that, both in listing and in selling. Sales price plus repairs, I'll tell you about that 20% in just a second, equals the total investment. When you are giving buyers advice on what to offer for a property, whether you think of that formally or not, my guess is you think about it all the time. Total investment, because you're going to want to make sure that your buyer is not underwater. This goes to your point mm -hmm. about I got to know the after improved value, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So sales price plus repair, total investment, after improved value. Let's talk about a little bit of detail. The 20%, when you come up with a repair or renovation number, let's just call it $50,000, okay? There's always going to be an added contingency reserve. There's always going to be ancillary fees, inspection fee, interim inspection, title update, maybe an architect, depends on the project. There's always going to be ancillary fees and a contingency. This is simply the initial estimate. That's an in initial budget for uh, uh, contingency and fees, that 20%. We're going to nail that down during that process that I told you about because we're going to make sure nobody ever borrows more money than they have to. Mm -hmm. So we're going to nail that down during the process. Sales price plus repairs, total investment, after improved mm -hmm. value. Okay? So where do the numbers come from? That's as important as the mathematical formula and the factors in the formula. The information getting to the factor is important. Where is the repair number coming from? Let me kind of, uh, I'll get you started with on a bank pro bank owned property, that's the easy one. You always have a BPO, right? The broker price opinion the selling broker has, has a list of necessary repairs, cost to cure, it gives you a starting point, okay? In the older homes that we're really talking about, in the general inventory that we can create inventory with, it's gonna be the kitchen or it's going to be new windows, or it's going to be a roof and a paint job. If I need that number, where does it come from? So I'm going to ask you, how many of you can walk into a house and generally know how much it's going to cost for the kitchen? You all can, right? You can. You can get in the right ballpark. That's where it starts. This is just the ballpark. This is not the pitcher's mound. We're going to go through the process of an, uh, a product-specific inspection, a contractor's bid to get on the pitcher's mound, but here we're just in pre-approval. We're getting in the ballpark. You can help your buyers do that. If it's a bigger project, you know, maybe it is a, a, a vacant estate property and really needs a lot, where can you get that number? How many of you know a contractor? All of you do. A contractor can visit a property with the right instructions mm -hmm. and they can know how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. And by the right instructions, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah. By the right instructions, you know, if a, you know, a, a young couple is buying a property and, and uh, they want a contractor to do an initial bid and they say, you know, I want to do the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Well, a contractor's going to go in and just give them a bid for the kitchen, right? We need to know more than that. We need someone to generally look at the property and 
we need to know all of the things that it's going to take. At the end of the day, remember no CO required to close? Mm -hmm. We're going to need a CO when the job's done. What's it going to take to get there? Contractors can go into any property and figure that out. So we've just come up with three different ways to get that number. So don't be afraid of it. Most of the time you walk into a property that needs a bunch of work, but we're all afraid of it. Let's be prepared. Where's the number coming from? You've got a way to get that. How about sales price plus repairs, total investment compared to the after improved value? Where's the after improved value come from? We've already had that conversation because we're going to do an appraisal based on this work being done. Right? The CMA. Do you're going to, how long does it take to do a CMA? I haven't done one yet. Like 10 know. minutes? It takes about 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so the CMA is going to tell us, you know, all, and you know all of the things. How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Where's the school? Where's the shopping? What's the market value in the neighborhood? You know, all of that, you're, you can do a CMA as if the property has been updated. Okay? Sales price plus repairs, total investment, after improved value, you're good. You're going to want to, that's called the property analysis. It's as simple as that. It's not complicated. You, you don't have to be afraid of it. You can all do that. General information. This is not stuff you're going to get hung on. This is just general information to get to the property analysis. Okay. Now, on the other side of the equation, honestly, in the mortgage business, we've, we've not paid enough attention to this, at least in the 50 years I've been doing this. You know, we'll get a pre-approval done, right? Mm -hmm. So you get Larry to do a pre-approval, and he gets the credit income and asset information <laughs> any other mortgage guy can do, and you can put it in your, in your computer, and you press the magic button and the computer spits out a pre-approval letter for $500,000. So your, your buyer gets that and they go, wow, I didn't think I'd be qualified for anything. Larry's magic. <laughs> and they bring you the pre-qualification letter, right? You got a $500,000 checkbook now. What do you do? You tell them to get in the car. Because now you're going to start looking for the dream home. You got a $500,000 checkbook. You're going to go out and buy a house. Well, how much of the houses you're looking at? Dream home? House? 800. 800. 1 million. Good estimate. Good right. right. We're not in this. We're not, we're not there yet. Right. We got to find something they can afford. Okay? So, sales price plus repairs, total investment, times the loan to value. Our conversation is simply going to be a little bit different and not just be focused on income to sales price. It's income to loan amount. Loan amount represents sales price plus repairs. Mm -hmm. If your guy qualifies for $500,000 and you're unsuccessful finding the dream home, well, let's go look at less expensive homes. And let's get around 400, 425. That yeah needs the new kitchen that you're that you've been dreaming about. So we're going to be at loan amount, sales price mm -hmm. plus repairs. Okay, close as is. Put in your new gourmet kitchen. And guess what? You're still qualified. You go with a five hundred thousand dollar pre qualification and try to buy the six hundred thousand dollar house. You're not going to get there. Okay, so let's track the money. Where's the money go? You close as is on time. The remember the math: sales price plus repairs times the LTV, loan amount plus the down payment. Or your credits in any transaction: loan amount plus down payment. The seller is paid. You get paid. Go find another family to help. Repairs go into an escrow for the homeowner, just like a construction loan. Mm -hmm. And then through a system of inspections and draw requests, 
we fund the project. It's a simple process. All right? That's the math. It does work Did like that answer all of your questions? Yes, yes. I was like wondering if it works like construction work. Yes. Yep. yep. This is fantastic. So the key they elements. Pay what they, yeah. Right? The key elements. The initial repair number. Mm -hmm. That ballpark number yeah. that nobody ever wants to talk about. Yep. Put it on the table. Yeah. Right from the listing appointment. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Yeah. The after improved value. I don't know where that's coming from. Or after a guy does a whole bunch of. Of course you do. Yeah. Bedrooms, bathrooms, mm -hmm. neighborhood, right? CMA. Yeah. Property analysis. Pre approval with a plan to improve. The plan to improve starts with the concept of loan amount represents sales price plus repairs. That's the initial factor in the concept behind the plan to improve. Okay? You can do more than just buy the house, you can fix it. Ma'am? Is there a timeline for this? And then you have to change it over to a different loan? Ah, great question. So, no, is the answer. It's a 30 year fixed rate loan, fully funded at the closing table. You know, when I was young, you had to do three loans to get this done, right? You had to do a short term acquisition. That was a couple of years ago, not a long time. So you had to do a short term acquisition. You had to do short term, hot money, hard money to do the improvements. Then you had to get a takeout, right? Then you had to get a takeout when you flipped it, or you had to get a takeout to pay off the construction to hard money loan and the ac acquisition. This is one loan, all wrapped up into one, right? There's no modification. It's not a construction loan. It's a renovation loan. That's the fundamental difference. When you have a new house, you get a new construction loan. The most uh, popular product is the C to P right construction to permanent mm -hmm. there's a modification after construction mm -hmm. that's not what this is this is a fully funded 30-year fixed rate now next question and I know it's somebody's got it in their head mm -hmm. okay how much does that cost right mm -hmm. yes it's higher mm -hmm. about a half percent and a regular loan okay but I want you to think about this for a second and think about more than the interest rate Right? This is opportunity to buy a house that is discounted. That's the, the ugly dog on the block. That's the cheapest house that people are afraid of. Something like that, right? It's going to be a little less expensive. It's going to be $400,000 instead of the $500,000, $600,000 neighborhood value, right? So understand that to have that initial conversation with a home buyer. If you buy in this neighborhood, you're gonna find $600,000 prices. You're only qualified for 500. And, and by the way, the $600,000 purchase is gonna cost you uh, X numbers of dollars per month, right? If we find you that discounted opportunity that does need a new kitchen, we can help you accomplish that within your $500,000 budget, where's your payment? It's down here. It's less per month. Isn't that what everybody's interested in? Yes. And you the, get to customize the house the way you want. And you get to pick out the cabinets and countertops. <laughs> yes. Right. No, it's great. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you, you don't participate in the bidding war. And you don't participate in the bidding war. It's all about opportunity, yeah. but your ability to be prepared to explain the opportunity mm -hmm. is critical. Yeah. You have to get someone to see it. You can't just have them stuck in the headline <laughs> of interest rates are going up. You have to educate them. <laughs> you have to educate them. You have to counsel them. You have to earn their trust and give them good information. And you can only give people good information when you have some detail, mm -hmm. right? I have one quick question before sure. we move. So there is an opportunity, a house in a good location and everything, but really the house needs to be torn down. Mm -hmm. The foundation can stay. Do you give mortgage like that? Mm -hmm. or no? yeah. You do? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. it, it again goes back to understanding the detail and okay. the programs. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> you can't do that with the conventional programs. Yeah, yeah, no. Was, Our question was, yeah. a great neighborhood, that, that and the house has to be torn down. There's yeah, structural it issues. It it's completely rotten. Yeah. Raccoons have been in there for 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, it has to be torn down. Mm -hmm. You can use an FHA 203K, tear it down, as long as you keep the, the foundation. foundation. All right? Yeah. If you dig out the foundation, you have new construction. Yeah. You can keep the foundation and build a new house. Mm -hmm. You can repair or improve the existing foundation. You can. Now, people will often yeah. say to us, so you can wait a second, uh, yeah. I, can, uh, I can tear out everything and just leave two cinder blocks. No, no, you can't do that. You have to leave the footprints. Yeah. You have to leave the foundation. Mm -hmm. If one of the walls is caving in, well, you get to fix it. Mm -hmm. If you want to change the footprint, mm -hmm. you can make it bigger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But back. you have to leave the existing foundation. Okay, yes. so you can extend it. You can yes, make you it can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On two yeah. sides, three sides? No, the back yeah. only. Yeah. Wherever the, the zoning is. Yeah. Only the back. Very the uh, setbacks. Set are let, yeah. uh -huh. let me let me get you to let me get you to think this way. You can do anything that fits within the use available for the property. Okay? So, so you can really go off in all kinds of different directions with that, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. But keep in mind that the ability to really have all of the options available is right here. Yeah. Okay? You'll get that slide. Did you say something that um, occupied the earlier? Uh, yeah. Well, so, I, so I have this has to be my second house, or this has to be my house, or so if I want to, what if I want to do a flip? These you can do that. So that's not mm -hmm. on the Here's the that's correct, because of the variety of programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to do a flip, <clears throat> you're in a conventional program, because as we all know, FHA programs don't uh, only allow owner occupancy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do an investment property with a renovation loan, you're into Fannie Mae Home Style or Freddie Mac Choice Renovation. Mm -hmm. Second home, single unit, investment, single unit. How about my home? If okay. I want to do updates in my home. If you want to do an update in your house, you're into a refinance, right? Okay. Using I the same settlements. Yes. Okay. Same sort of math. Okay. Okay. But here, the answer to your question is, yes, you can be an investor. We're going to fit you into the right program. So renovation solutions include primary one to four family property, including mixed use, by the way. Okay. Second home, single family. Investment property, single family. All right. All of those uh, product types, property types, can fit into a renovation solution. All of them, same math. Okay? Whoops, sorry. Everybody good with the math? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go to, okay, I gave you a lot of information, right? This is a lot of background that I hope shows you there is opportunity for your buyers mm -hmm. and for you to find some listings that maybe we can capture. We're going to talk about that. So what are your, what, what can be your action steps? Your action steps should be really around the homework and the buyer preparation. How do you find and recognize good property opportunities? Because they all aren't good opportunities. Understand your buyer's potential to perform. Help them with a pre-approval and a plan to improve. And that's simply getting the thought process to start, right? It's simply, and I made the comment to that gentleman before, th this is just about adding a tool, right? Whatever it is that you're doing today that is successful, keep doing it. Let's add this tool, okay? Identify the right solutions and partner with the right experts is a critical, critical choice. So let's let's dig into 
find and recognize good property opportunities. How can you tell if it's a fixer upper or not, right? Property analysis, you do the math. Mm -hmm. Sales price plus cost it has to, should be less than the after improved value. There is some flexibility in the case of a 203K owner occupied property comes in a little bit low, we can go to a higher number, but this should be the source item in your advice, right? Sales price plus cost should be less than or equal to the after improved value. From our, from our conversation, you know where to get that number to begin with, right? You know where to get this number to begin with. Oops, sorry. I guess I didn't turn my ringer off. Now I did. Okay? find and recognize good property opportunities. Here's what that means. How do you tell if it's a fixer upper or not? Let's think about categories of property, right? Cosmetic issues, updates, minor repairs. The house that's okay. It just still has an I Love Lucy kitchen, all right? Ugly, out of date, needs some work. Paint job, new roof, new heater, those kinds of things, right? You can do that. Anybody can do that with the right preparation and the right process. Gut renovation, that's pretty difficult and you really ought to have some experience. Either yourself as the buyer or in the team that you put together around the transaction. Last, tear down, really don't do it, right? If you're giving a buyer advice, that's the good advice to give them. Okay, those are the categories. Let's just look at some examples. Here's a real nice house. This is a, uh, in Bradley Beach on the Neptune side of the railroad tracks, a block away from the train station in Bradley Beach. Okay, <clears throat> young guy bought the house, right? Out of the city, millennial buyer. I want to live at the shore. I'm getting out of the city. I gotta have the convenience of getting on the train, right? There's this house. Paint job, new roof, new porch. It's a beautiful little house, right? He also, the kitchen, I mean, this is the interior, right? You can see there's a wall between the little kitchen and the dining room. The cabinets are very nice. Those cabinets are still there. Wall came out, new kitchen goes in. Original floor. Finished. Original floor was redone. Yep. A little close up of the kitchen. There's the before and after. Not complicated, right? Not real expensive. Nice little project. Went from green to green. Went from green to green. <laughs> Guy must be Irish. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, here's his bedroom. Wallpaper. Everybody loves wallpaper. Uh -huh. Come back goes to, uh, yeah, it's much nicer, right? Not a big, expensive project, mm -hmm. just really cleaned up the house that he wanted and was in his price range. I really want to know what that is on the wall. That's wallpaper. No, no. Oh. Ship right the window. Yeah. What is it? No. Ship lock. No, 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 no. Just, no, no, no. Oh, the green thing that's hanging, oh. lights or something, like or something. Oh, that. What is that? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> How about that? That's interesting. Well, you have here's to another. Have to, here's, you have to be able to see the potential yeah. too. At the Absolutely. Point. Here's one in North Jersey. You know, this is okay house. I mean, it just it was blah, it was just yeah. blah, right? And, and and it had a really cool west exposure. Okay, so and so it was on the market for a while, and a couple wanted to buy it, but it's kind of blah. And I'd really love to have a front porch. Well, now they have a front porch. Okay, mm -hmm. so this goes to the topic of this doesn't have to be a blown out piece of property. Mm -hmm. You can just add a front porch if you want, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This one is in Wall Township. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this is about three years old. So, uh, I mean, that's not terrible, but I hate the bamboo you know, yeah. cabinets. This is terrible. I mean, I'd buy this house, but that kitchen is just, you know? Wow. 
That's yeah. nicer. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. with Same with the bathroom. People just don't like pink toilets. Mm. <laughs> they just don't like them. Right? <laughs> That's nicer. Pink. Still looks pink. <laughs> Sometimes the house is too small. It's too old, and and you got to do something about the ramp, right? Holy cow! So this is in the Bay Shore. I can't remember which town. Um, it was just a little too small, and the guy in the neighborhood wanted it because his uncle lives around the corner. Now it's bigger. Huh? So there's the question of. If you just want to buy the house and make it bigger, yeah. okay. So yeah, so you can. You can tell it's all the same if you look at the the uh, right columns, right there. And this one is my personal favorite. Oh no, not this one. It's the next. One. This one also an example of it's a little too small, but it's in uh, I think uh, might have been Maplewood. I don't remember. It's just too small. Mm -hmm. Now it's bigger. This is my personal favorite. And I, granted, this is this is a very old example, mm -hmm. but I love this example because no one would buy this house, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, this is on the don't do it. Part, right? yeah. Young guy buys this house. He was a carpenter. He buys this house. It's in Springfield, Massachusetts, right? It's a three-family property. Mm -hmm. Guy lives on the first floor, rents the apartments. He collects a plus five hundred dollars on his total housing cost. Mm -hmm. That's affordable That's ownership. Yeah. You know, if you just think about that a little bit, if you get into, you know, there's lots of two and three-family properties around here, mm -hmm. like in Long Branch and stuff, mm -hmm. right? If the owner occupant buys the property and collects the rent, mm -hmm. that becomes affordable home ownership. Mm -hmm. There's great opportunity in that. And with an FHA loan, it's three and a half percent down yeah. for a four family property. What's the loan limit on four family now? Like uh, it's over a million. It's, yeah. it's up there. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Right? Those are the examples. Now, let's get to the conversation about listing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now understanding the information we've talked about, how does this apply when I'm going out to try to find some listings? Now you guys have been talking to potential sellers, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they're afraid like everybody else, you know? So this information was kind of interesting to me. This is from uh, Keeping Current Matters which is a great site if you haven't looked at it. It's got great material you can sign up for and use in your postings and all kinds of things. So this one was, uh, should I update my house before I sell it? Ask your agent. So they're driving a consumer to you to get good advice, which is exactly what should be happening. If you're trying to decide if you should make updates or renovations before you sell your house, your agent is your expert guide. They know what it's worth in your market and how much it could impact the sales price. Okay, so you go into that house we've been des describing with the I Love Lucy kitchen, orange countertops, avocado appliances, perfectly clean, everything works, you know? But the range is, it's an electric range from, I don't know, 1970, right? What are you gonna tell them? You should do some work on the kitchen before we list this house, right? This, this is kind of what this is saying, you know? So, but, but for me, okay, I'm not a realtor having that conversation with somebody, but I'm looking at the information. They literally give you major kitchen remodel. You uh, recoup 54%. Wait a second. I'm retiring mm -hmm. and you're telling me that what I should do is spend twenty thousand dollars to update this kitchen before I sell the house, and you're only going to be able to get me ten of that back. Why would I do that? I I just I I I feel sorry for you trying to have that conversation. I don't know how you do it. God bless you if you do, and you get a good transaction. 
But I think that's a difficult conversation to have. It, it, you tell me. Is it easy? No. Can't be easy. They're only going to get half the money back. If the market is flooded with houses for sale, updates may be necessary to make your house stand out. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but if you could do the easy stuff, make it nice and clean, and have a better sales strategy, and not tell them to spend twenty thousand dollars, you're. I just think it's a okay. Easier answer is probably not the right way to explain it, but it seems like I'm going to earn that business a little easier, right? You don't, want, you don't want to have somebody do a renovation, and if they don't have very good taste, mm -hmm. somebody else is going to come in and not yeah. like what you did. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's easier to just say, let somebody come in and do what they want. I yeah. totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. Let somebody come in and look at your house yeah. and think about making it their own, and I can help them accomplish that. Mm -hmm. I can help them get a solution in place where they can pick their new cabinets and countertop where they can pick all their own new colors and they can make your house their own doesn't that make good sense mm -hmm. now I'm I'm, I'm 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 here to tell you it's not magic but it's another opportunity mm -hmm. it's another tool you have if you can communicate that tool to the seller you have an advantage you've differentiated yourself Again, from the next guy going in, that's going to tell him to spend the twenty thousand dollars, right? That doesn't answer my question from earlier. Okay. If I can get eight fifty-five percent back after doing a major kitchen remodel, why would a new buyer who buys it with um, a renovation loan who uh -huh. replaces the kitchen? appreciate immediately fifty thousand dollars in value for for the property okay so that's a very good question and that's a strict mathematical question based on this number right yeah right so here's I can only tell you this from my experience when you go price this house we're talking about yeah the discount in its condition I mean, you got to price the house right to sell it, right? I can only tell you from my experience that discount is going to be greater than the cost of the kitchen. If you're going to list that, you're not going to use that math in your uh, pricing strategy. Mm -hmm. You're going to price it according to uh, your analysis after its condition in that market, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, I can only tell you from all the statistics I've looked at for 30 years, you're going to end up at a price that's going to give room for that kitchen. Is that, you, you guys with me on that? Can you give us a, just give us a quick example? Sure. So, if this is in a, I don't know, $500,000 neighborhood, and if you go into a particular mm -hmm. house, and you know the kitchen's going to have to be replaced, and they're going to move that wall, and the heating system is very old, you're not going to price that the same as an updated house across the street, are you? No, you're not. Because it just isn't the same. You're going to price it at a lesser amount because you have to make that house attractive to that buyer. So if it's a $500,000 neighborhood, and that $500,000 comes from the updated values, this house has not been updated, you're gonna price it at something less than... Okay, so you're, you're basically saying that you make it up on the purchase price. Absolutely. Okay. But the That's where the loses. added value opportunity Right, but then, then the homeowner loses or not because he's giving up more than... No, I want my house to be at that price. So okay. 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 Then go ahead and spend all that money on the kitchen, which you don't have in the bank. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I can get a renovation loan. So, right? it's, it's a, yeah. Yeah. so it's about apples and apples. Right? Right. So all I can tell you is... What I've learned from the data over thousands of transactions 
And after I told you about K Mortgage, yeah. right? Yeah. So after K Mortgage, I managed renovation lending for the Bank of New York for almost 10 years. After Bank of New York, I managed renovation lending for Bank of America nationally for almost 10 years. Okay. Uh, then I went to Guaranteed Rate Prospect, and then, thank the good Lord, I found advisors. But through those years, thousands of transactions, I can simply tell you that when you take the sales price plus repairs and look at the after-improved value, yeah. the difference between the total investment and the after-improved value on the average over all those transactions, 17%. Okay. I'm just going to have to take your word on that. I can only give you the data. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Everybody good with trying to have that kitchen conversation? Mm -hmm. Okay. List a house that needs work without asking for a complete overhaul. So what are the key elements that you need to think about? Understand the buyer pool. Who's going to buy that house? So that comes from what's the level of improvement. Is it going to be an investor because it needs, you know, or is it going to be the homeowner that's looking for the gourmet kitchen that you can add to the older house? Clean up the yard. Do the easy stuff, right? Get the teenagers down the street to clean up the yard. It's cheap. Make small updates around the house. Fix a door that, that's not tight. Focus on the features, the, home, the space in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Focus on the features your home already has and highlight those that can be updated, like the kitchen. Make sure you price the home right, our conversation about the pricing. Educate yourself and the seller on the ways a renovation loan solution can increase the buyer pool. And this is where you start to have the conversation about you're going to get cash offers. I can, can bring you some home buyers some young families looking for houses yeah. and I can give them the right solution to get to the closing table. So you're starting to have that conversation with the seller mm -hmm. to open them up to not just cash buyers. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Help the buyer choose the colors, pick the cabinets and countertops. Yeah. Okay. It starts right away at the listing conversation and it starts right away at the first conversation with the buyer, just adding tools to the toolbox. If you look on realtor.com on any particular day, and if you go into the filters and you put in fixer upper, there's all kinds of properties that fit that algorithm. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out there. Often people don't look for them and consider them viable inventory. They are. And distressed properties too. You can find distressed properties on Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah, you can change the filter to bank home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of ways to find them. Sure. Yeah. Remember the math. Property analysis. Okay. You know how to get a repair number, the initial repair number. Mm -hmm. Total investment after improved value. Think about it right away in the beginning when you're talking to a seller. You get better prepared to remove the fear. Find and recognize good property opportunity, sales price plus cost after improved value, costs. You know how to get the costs, okay? There's other ways to get the cost too. You can go to public information. This comes from uh, Home Advisor, which is now part of Angie. So Angie's List and Home Advisor are combined. So this, you can get this right off the website. You can get somebody to, here's the general range <laughs> of remodeling a bathroom. It's kind of cheap. I just paid 25, so. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Remodel a kitchen, so you can begin to get the information. Right, this is not updated. All right, okay. okay. Call, you can just go with your information in your marketplace so let me take you to, let me say this. So let's talk about that a little bit. I don't want to interrupt. I'm going to take you to the process to get to the costs. So we've talked about getting the initial ballpark cost. When you have a buyer that's successful, after you've gone through that initial math, 
for the after improved value. We've qualified the guy. We've talked about a plan to improve. You get a contract, right? So here's the real important part about costs. It's making sure that you get that accurate number so that your home buyer is going to be able to get the project done, right? Because mm -hmm. that's when we all get referrals. Not after he goes to the closing, after he's sitting on the front porch with a new red front door. Mm -hmm. So the process is good initial information, getting us in the ballpark. You get the contract. We immediately have a good consultation. First thing we do after that is a, uh, 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 assign the inspector. <laughs> this is not one, two, three home inspections. This is a construction consultant. I want to give you, here's what they do. And I, I, I know I have a slide about that in a minute, but the construction consultant inspects the property, determines all of the deficiencies. Okay, just like a regular home inspector. Yeah. And in New Jersey, they have to be a, home, a licensed home inspector. Yeah. Their responsibility is to give you the plan for repairs mm -hmm. that includes all of those cool. necessary inspe inspections, mm -hmm. plus all of the things any home buyer wants to add to that within their budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get the inspection. You get the plan, which is called a specifications of repair. It's a 35 category scope of improvements, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, painting, cabinets, windows, doors, all of those things. They estimate it by category and they break it into materials and labor. Your home buyer then gets two reports. The specifications of repair comes with all the numbers and it comes without the numbers because the next step is choose your contractor. So here's a key element of this in the process steps getting to the closing on time. When you use the right inspector, you remember I told you that the uh, appraiser has to have the plan for repairs to get the appraisal done. We get it from the construction consultant. We don't wait for Joe the contractor because they're going to be in the same ballpark at the end of the day. We get that inspection report from the construction consultant and go right to the appraiser so that while the appraisal is being done, our uh, renovation specialist on my team works with the homeowner to choose the contractor to get the contractor documents. So we have a dedicated person who chases down the paperwork, okay? So it's inspection, plan, choose the contractor, work with the borrower to, to uh, make all the necessary design decisions, complete the, the exact numbers, okay? That's how you get from the ballpark to the pitcher's mound. Make sense? Do you work with the specific contractors? No. Uh, the home, thank you. I mean, you can we, recommend or you can recommend? We have a list of those that we have worked with. Okay. We can't recommend them as a lender. Okay. Right? Yes, I understand. But the construction consultant can. Mm -hmm. okay. Guess who else could? Yeah. You. Yeah. Right? Um, you all know contractors. Yeah. They got to be licensed. In New Jersey, it's a 13V number okay. at the uh, Home Improvement Contractors License. Sure. Got to have liability insurance or workman's comp. Mm -hmm. And we, put, we do a review process, it's just mm -hmm. a one pager, yeah. call a couple of references, make sure they have suppliers. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's homework to that. Again, happening in one of those swim lanes. Okay. And the inspector, do you also have a list of inspectors? We do. You can recommend? Yeah, the inspectors. Yes, we have a list and we use just a few. Okay. You can, and anybody can go to HUD's website, and you can find a list of 203K consultants. Okay. If you do that, you're going to come up with a list in New Jersey that's got about 110 guys on it. Half of them are retired, or some of them have passed away. They haven't updated the list in a while. So well, because we have the experience that we have, we use a short list of just those that are able to give us the service levels we demand. Okay? Perfect. Okay. Any other questions? 
and, and the lender will provide, you're providing that service to get that person in there. Yes. The home buyer pays, just like you pay a home inspector, yes. right? And, and, and this is a little more, right? A home inspection costs what, 500 bucks? This is gonna cost seven, but you get the plan, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I would recommend to you as, you, as you think about this new tool in your toolbox, you sell a house and you know this is gonna be the right solution, don't get one, two, three home inspections like you normally do. God bless them, they do a good job on regular houses. This isn't regular. Let's get the construction consultant to do that inspection, save a couple of bucks, we get to the appraisal faster. Sir. And would they be speaking with your home buyer to determine like finishes to get a price that would be accurate to kind of figure out what the repairs would be? Yes. Okay. And this way you're going to a contract with a plan and not specs, but you've got a plan. So Correct. Just not walking with the line. Correct. Them they have a scope yeah, right. in categories. Okay. And much easier for them. No numbers. Yeah. They're going to fill in their numbers. And then we're going to match them up. Yeah, much easier for them. Yep. And, and by the way, that gives your home buyer the confidence of, I'm getting a fair price, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm not getting the contractor that's going to bid a fifty thousand dollar job for thirty five to win it, and then at the end of the day, I'm going to end up paying sixty because he's going to nail me all through the deal. Mm -hmm. Same the other way. If it's a fifty thousand dollar job, we don't want them to have to pay seventy five. So we got the construction consultant in there for that advice and, and insulation. Okay. I, I also want to mention because I've worked with something like that before. There is a standard to what kind of you know standard to what kind of renovation. Like it's not the top of the line, and it's not below grade, but sure. there's a certain grade like that is grade. approved. Yeah. 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 So and uh, yes, the construct like construction consultant has that mm -hmm. conversation yeah. with the home buyer. Okay. You know, yeah. it's you have to do. They they have their responsibility is three categories: the things you have to do to get to the CO when we're done. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to fix all three bathrooms. You can't close the door on the third one, yeah. and because the toilet fell through the floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got to do all the work you have to do. Second, you because you have this opportunity. To finance this, you ought to go ahead and replace the heating system or change from oil to gas, you know, those kinds of things, to improve the integrity of the building. And third, you, 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 you got a wish list. You want to put in a Viking range? Knock yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> right? Buckets, yeah. You can do those things. <laughs> yeah, I know. You want to build a pool? You can do that too. On your own. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay? So. Two, so what we did was just tear apart that first step, right? Mm -hmm. Getting the costs and, and, be, and pick out the right properties. The second part, remember your buyer's potential <laughs> to perform is not just the qualification, right? They need to cover the sales price plus the cost. Qualification is sales price plus cost, okay? Prepare your buyer's vision, expectations, and ability. And, and that simply says, add the tool. Give them the additional option. If you can take the $500,000 pre-approval and find them their dream home for $500,000, please do that. You should all do that. But if you can't, you're taking them to cheaper houses, cheaper houses need work sales price plus costs, okay? Get pre-approval with a plan to improve. Just a little more data around the potential for that in the millennial population. This is a Bank of America uh, a survey done not too many months ago. Millennials are buying fixer-uppers amid a cutthroat market, buying older homes, renovating them. The research data reveals many are taking out loan projects for home improvement projects. More than, and this is the data that I like, the more than three quarters, actually 82% in their uh, home improvement survey said they are more likely, more likely to buy a fixer upper than a newly built home. Why do you think that is? To make it theirs. To make it theirs. I get to choose the cabinets and countertops. Yeah. 
In a competitive market, millennials are willing to bet on riskier homes. The interesting part here is millennials are undaunted by homes that need major repairs. This doesn't just say a roof and a paint job. This says, I'm not afraid to replace the heating system or move the wall to put in a new kitchen. Major repair, 71% say they'd be willing to purchase a fixer upper. And that is up from 68% in 2019. They're not afraid, but they are also not prepared. With this information, you can prepare them. Just a reminder of the math. Everybody's good with the math? Could I just ask one quick question about the, um, the presentation to the seller? Sure. When you're going through all this? Mm -hmm. Is it likely that any one of them is going to look at that number after improvement, uh, appreciation, or value and say, well, why can't I have some of that? Hmm. Um, no, I really don't know the answer to that question. Hmm. Because I think that if it was me, and I sort of fit that category, I suppose, uh, I'm thinking, how do I get this place sold mm -hmm. without it yeah. costing me money? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? But somebody else makes on it, God bless them. Okay. And, but I'll take that conversation to, a, to, a, to another level. On those homes that are opportunities, that the investors are all buying mm -hmm. and flipping and making money, why can't we do a better job of helping young families take advantage of the opportunity? Mm -hmm. well, because they are, and here's my logic there is, they are your bigger buyer population. Yeah. They are the people that will benefit more than just the dollars and cents. Absolutely. Homeownership changes everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you really look through that, I told you my initial story. Well, the reason it got my attention was I do have a lot of kids. I have eight kids. I have 11 grandkids, I have number 12's on the way, oh, so so I have a lot of kids. How many great kids? Very important, none yet. <laughs> They'll be coming because I'm not going away yet. Um, so the important part is home ownership, if you, you know, when I first got in this and, and I got on those HUD committees, and so I had a lot of time to think and meditate on what this can accomplish if you do it on purpose, and I got into some of those studies about home ownership that are done by the Joint Center for Housing Studies at uh, Harvard University. Uh, and s some of the data behind that is shocking. Uh, children from an owned home environment are nine, have a 9% greater cognitive ability. Hmm. That's like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And then you go into the crime rates and the participation in the PTO and you go into all of the pride of home ownership, not even to start talking about the stability of the housing cost. It home ownership changes lives. Yeah. We need to pay attention to that. Sure. Yeah. Right? Sorry, I didn't really mean to get off on that one today. Yeah, that was good. But yeah, there's nice. many uneducated buyers out there. Oh yeah. Budget, Absolutely. Yeah. Remember. It's not just your father's 203K. It is the FHA 203K, which, by the way, I've done more than anybody that you'll ever talk to. It's a great program, great foundation, but it's also Fannie Mae Homestyle, Freddie Mac Choice Renovation. They all have their particular features and benefits. It's VA renovation, jumbo renovation. It's a variety of products. Don't get stuck in, in a box in the beginning. got to make sure that whoever you use has the right business model, has the right experts on a team. Okay? So here's some suggested talking points. If you're able to buy an older house at a good price and add a new kitchen, would you be interested? Now, when do you think you ought to ask that question? When you first meet them. Exactly. <clears throat> Open it up. Right? Open up the option. Open up the thought process. Just get into additional tools that you're going to be able to use in showing them their dream home because you're going to show them ones that they can develop into their dream home. 
If you were able to add updates right away, would you consider this house? And you didn't have that conversation, and you go into one of the ones we looked at. If you were able to add the <clears> updates <throat> right now, would you consider this house? Th that's the solution to the but house, right? I'd buy this house, but that kitchen stinks. I'd buy this house, but it needs a new roof. I'd buy this house, but it doesn't have a finished basement. If I could help you take care of that, right in your financing, would you would you consider this house? Special financing is available on this house that will allow you to add the cost of the update you need. You can make this great a great home for your family. You got to have that in your conversation. You need to have a sales conversation. That needs to be part of it. Don't let somebody walk into that kitchen we looked at and turn away quietly not give you a chance to have a sales conversation get back here yeah i always talk about potential when i show this type of homes to, to first time buyers yes you can remove that wall and update the kitchen and we can help you get the cost added right into your mortgage mm -hmm. you know when we talk about interest rate never hardly <laughs> ever right because it's all about the opportunity right it's about the opportunity so, how do I fill out the contract? It's always the first question, right? You remember the one with the bamboo kitchen? That's this one. $597,000 purchase price, $1,000 earnest money, $9,000 additional deposit. The just normal mortgage the guy was going to get was five sixty-seven, dollars right? You don't, none of the renovation numbers are in your sales contract. Your sales contract is just your sales contract. Don't get confused. It's just the sales transaction, okay? When we're processing the loan, this is the details of transaction right out of the loan operating system. There's the purchase price. We loaned that guy $171,000 for that kitchen and bathroom, a lot of other stuff he did in his house. At the end of the day, it simply meant that we lend him $726,000 instead of 567. We just lent him more money than you have in your contract. That does not change the terms and condition of your sales contract. It has nothing to do with it. Your sales contract is your sales contract is your sales contract. You okay? just work with the buyer on the site. Right, <laughs> right. Same thing, how do I fill out the contract? This is an FHA loan. You are going to put in FHA 203K if that's what we're going to use. That can also be in a, uh, uh, done with an addendum after the fact. But the numbers, same theory. It's just your sales contract. When we process the loan, we're going to lend them a little more money. So instead of lending them 181, we're going to loan them $200,000. Does not change the terms and conditions of your sales contract. Okay. <clears throat> you get why I didn't want to go into an FHA 203K class, a home style class, and a choice rent, right? You don't need to worry about all those details. We'll do that for you. What can we estimate to the seller that um, you know, the, time it, the time it's going to take to get that particular type of mortgage. Sure, uh, 45, days. Mm -hmm. 45 days. See. 45 days. What are you usually given a contract yeah, these same. days? 45 days. Yeah, 45, 45 days. 45 days. We seldom miss them. 30 days to get commitment. 43 is our average. Yeah, we got a great recipe, yeah. and we have experts that watch the milestones. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Heard, and I could be completely wrong, but during the period when the when the renovations are happening, uh -huh. is the buyer paying the full mortgage amount, or are they just paying okay. interest? Uh, yes, they're paying the full mortgage amount. It kind of runs to this gentleman's question earlier. <clears throat> Rem it's a fully funded loan. They're borrowing all of the money at the closing, <coughs> paying off the seller. We're putting the rest of the money in an escrow account. They do the project. We pay the, for the project through the escrow account. When you close, just like a regular mortgage, 
It's the first of the month after a full calendar month. And yes, they start making their full payments. If there's a budget problem, which is what we talked about, we're going to talk to them about that. If that's the case, you can add in the debt service during construction right into the project costs. Okay. So they have bought four hundred thousand, and but you actually get them four fifty. Uh -huh. They pay for the four hundred, and the fifty stays in escrow to pay. They them. pay for the. You're almost there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they pay for the four fifty because mm -hmm. that's the total they borrowed. Oh, okay. The at the closing table, we're paying off the four hundred thousand dollars sales price. Yes. And we're taking the fifty putting it in an escrow, okay. so it's dedicated to the renovation. All right, but they, st by they pay for the fourth lift. Yes. All right, got it. Everybody get that concept? Yes. Fully funded loan. Okay. I know you don't want to go into the product matrix, but do you just, could you say quickly? take that off of there. Just yeah. <laughs> the VA renovation, what yeah. pluses, minuses? Sure. So pluses are small job for a veteran. It's a great product, 100% loan to value. But there are terms and conditions within that program, like can't be any structural work. Mm -hmm. Like if your sill plates are bad because of termites, you can't do that. Can you remove a wall? You cannot remove a wall. Mm -hmm. It's just cosmetic it's issues. Cosmetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Secondly, there's a requirement that the veteran has to be able to occupy the property within about two weeks. You normally can't do that either. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Third, there's a maximum of $50,000. So there's a lot of reasons you probably wouldn't go with that product. Right. Often people will come looking for it, and that's terrific. And yes, we can give them that if they fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they don't fit and you really want that house, let's start talking about a 3.5% down FHA loan. You can go get a gift mm -hmm. and get seller concession for the closing costs. You can help them think through that process. Ma'am? Can you do these loans for condos and townhomes? You can do... Sorry. <coughs> I'm in a meeting, I gotta call you back. That's my daughter who lives with us with three of her children. <laughs> so how many have now? Renovation. renovation. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> That's why I'm not selling Maybe it. Maybe you need to I'm socks. sorry, could you give me that? So can you get can you buy purchase a condo or a townhome? Yes. With this one. Depends on the product. Okay. In the FHA 203K, it says in the regulations. And you'll find lenders that tell you, yes, we can do a condo. However, there is a uh, line that says there can only be four units in a building. Well, that's another way of saying no, <laughs> yeah. right? So in the FH, in the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac products, you can do condos, you can do co-ops, yes. But you can only do improvements to the interior of the unit, which yeah, you would yeah. expect, yeah. right? So the answer to your question, yes, you can do condos, co-ops, and renovation loan. Okay. Okay? Anybody? We good? Okay. The role of the construction consultant, I think we pretty much covered, didn't yeah. we? Consultant, the buyer, development. Okay. Review. Opportunities. Any qualified buyer. Any income level. Any property that needs updating and repairs. Okay? Home buyers can close as is. No requirements for town inspections or see nothing. No certificate of occupancy is required to close. The repairs are done after the loan is closed. The down payment can be as little as 3%. These are the peripheral attributes of every renovation loan. Can I go back? <laughs> you're going to get a copy. Gonna... You're going to get a copy of the PowerPoint. No, I'm, I'm, I'm using it in my. The... I'm just to have a, a, a file in there because okay. the presentation. So that's just. Yes, ma'am. Okay. For quick review. Type of loan we <laughs> use for the houses that have to be lifted. Yes. Thank you. Yes. We've, as a matter of fact, I think we have four of those going right now. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can lift and renovate the property. Okay. okay? So often, and sometimes you'll uh, have a lender that'll tell you, "No, you can't do that." Uh, in the FHA guidelines, it was uh, it was confusing information. Uh, they did refine it after some people complained about it and changed it. And it says you can, but some lenders don't know that yet. 
yes, you can lift a house. Okay? Everybody good? Okay. Pre-sale homework buyer preparation, you got that. Find and recognize good property opportunities. Understand the buyer's potential to perform. Identify the right solution and partner. Oh. Program benefits. Okay, you gotta go you want, do you want to go back? Oh, sorry. You want I, that I, one? I, 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 I this one. There you go. You, you want that one? Yes. Thank you. It's just a habit on my notes, so I can read. You're gonna it like this one. You're gonna like this one. Okay. okay. <laughs> Program benefits to you. Okay. So you got another tool in the toolbox. You got the ability for another option. Don't change what's working for you. But add this to what you're doing both on the listing side so you don't have to try to talk somebody into a new kitchen and on the selling side I can help you into your dream home and we're going to put in the new kitchen you're going to choose the cabinets and countertops <clears throat> help young families find affordable home ownership opportunities that, that in my mind that's number one Real estate, help real estate values by improving <coughs> homes and neighborhoods, decrease foreclosure inventory, help buyers who previously could not buy homes because they couldn't find the ones they can afford, help sellers, owners with properties in outdated condition. I think that's the big pickup if you know how to have that conversation. <coughs> Promote an underutilized niche program that may, many realtors don't know about, much less are decent at and after this you're gonna get one of these little diplomas Ooh. you'll get a seal you put on your card if you want to it's fixer upper agent and by the way if you google fixer upper real estate agent right now you know what you get me nothing <laughs> you get nothing we have a website and with your permission we're gonna list you on the website put a map on there and people will find you okay this is legit yeah. Promote another line. Okay. And the last one, you can make a little more money. And and I say, if you can make a little more money by doing these things, God bless you. Let's do more. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Let's do it. Thank you very much. So we get three CD credits and 